Hello YouTube, I wanted to do a video about the bucking coil uh, transformer and uh, I haven't seen too many videos about this uh, I think it's very important okay so we have two identical um, coils pretty much identical they're the same size the only difference is the direction in, in which the wire was wound so this, the start is over here and then the end is over here and this one is wound uh, counterclockwise and this one is one is one clockwise okay so um, depending on which way you wind your co your coils is going to affect uh, where the north and the south side is of the coil and um, here uh, I have a phone char an old uh, phone charger that I connected to um, alligator clips because I'm tired of using batteries uh, you know, you go through a lot of batteries with these experiments, and uh, it's at 6 volts. So let's try hooking up these coils. I'm going to hook up these coils the same way, and we'll see um, if, if that's true, that the direction of the winding affects where the north and the south is. So here we go. This is an uh, all-north uh, rotor. You've seen it in my other videos. Um, and let's see how it will react to this coil and um, on this coil this is the positive and this is the negative so let's see okay. so. see the coil re repels the magnets so uh, it, these are all north magnets so that indicates that this side of the coil is north as well because the same po poles uh, repel each other See, repels it. Okay. okay now uh, I hooked up the coil. See, the the start of the winding is at the positive, and the end of the winding is at the ne at the negative. See, okay. Now I'm gonna sw switch them out with this with this one. Okay, so I switched out the coils, and uh, this is the uh, coil that's one in the other direction, and. As you can see, the magnets are now being attracted to it. So that indicates that now this uh, end is south and this end is north. And see, I hooked it up. The start of the winding is at the positive. The end of the winding is at the negative. So the direction uh, which you wind your coil will uh, affect the direction of the magnetic field that's induced. So this is how this um, whole concept relates. So uh, here we have the bucking coil transformer. Okay, the bucking coil transformer. Um, you have um, your primary, which is wound uh, clockwise, and then uh, you have your secondary. And the secondary is uh, on this side; it's wound clock clockwise, and then um, on the other side, it's wound counterclockwise. And there is a, a gap in the ferrite. So what that what that creates a nonlinear trans uh, magnetic uh, flux uh, path. So um, if you have just a regular ferrite, you end up with consolation. So you you won't the sec secondary you won't get a voltage in the secondary because you'll just have uh, magnetic field fields uh, clashing into each other. But uh, since this is an, uh, it has a gap in there, it's a, it creates a nonlinear uh, flux uh, flux path. So what happens is you actually have an increased current and voltage in the secondary than you do in the primary. And I believe at least Scal that's one of Edley Scalman's secrets. He um, had this uh, PMH um, device and uh, on, if you look at his uh, original picture of the PMH, it looks like one side is one clockwise and the other side one counterclockwise. And um, and if this bar is actually not pressed to to the um, to this horseshoe part, but actually if there is a gap uh, there, then you would have pretty much the same effect as here, where it is going to be a nonlinear transmission because the flux will have to jump, and um, you you end up with some strange effects there. And uh, I'll be replicating this in my future videos. The bucking coil transformer. I'll provide uh, links to the video where I first found this so you can check out the paper on it and um, 
Okay, let's keep experimenting.